Okay, Roger once again, Mud Fossil University. Today with a very serious subject about weather events we're having now and how extreme they are. Floods, fires, tornadoes, hurricanes, I mean every manner of issue. Now, what causes these things? These are barometric pressure problems. These are atmospheric interactions that are caused by problems or, you know, their, their interactions in the atmosphere. Let me put it that way. Well, what causes those? All right, let's take a look into that and, and think about it. Now, I say it's barometric pressure, and barometric pressure causes, causes um, the air currents to force against the earth, causing all kinds of problems. Even earthquakes are possible. Um, volcanic activity, you know, crushing and moving of the surface of the earth. It's crushing against the surface of the earth. Now, listen to this. We're going to go through a little deeper into this, but just let's start here. Interesting facts. Highest surface air pressure. That's pressure. They think it's because there's more more dense air on top of it pushing against the earth. It's it's we're pushing the earth into ether. Now. The highest surface air pressure occurred in winter over Asia and North America, where cold air masses form big, become very deep. So they think there's a whole pile of cold air, and that's why it's so heavy on the Earth. I say no. That At that particular time of the year, the Earth is spinning in through the ether and hitting this, like at the top of the, the Earth, surface as it spins through is almost that area is, is being impacted more than other areas and it's crushing it that's why it's so dense the sur highest surface pressure was at lake so-and-so in siberia on the 31st of december 1968 32 inches average sea pressure is 29.9 so it's a seven percent higher than normal which means there was 7% more atmospheric mass above that point than normal. I say no. There was more ether pushing against it at that point. So we're in a dense region in the, in the galactic soup. And I'll show you what I mean by that. All right, this is what we observe for the solar systems. They spin in a circle. I'm sorry, not solar systems, galaxies. They spin in a spiral like this. And they literally are crushing in down into it. Now, solar systems are surround, I believe, virtually all these stars, which are the little bright spots. Now, our solar system, let's say, is right here. As it's being dragged through like this, it's coming into other clusters of, of space, which might have more dense ether. And ether is what is all in here. That's what, Everything in here is ether. And they're negative particles that are thrown off of luminous bodies. Right now, because everybody follows Einstein, they think there's nothing that gets thrown off of luminous bodies. It's insanity. They are spitting out particles, and those particles are the things that fill the universe. They're, we think they're, they're, they're nothing, but they're there, and they have a region that they don't want to be smashed into, and they get smashed into matter, and they, they glow. That's their nature. They're dark matter and dark energy while they're not bumping into anybody as they're in the atmosphere. Now, as we're getting ripped into it, we're bumping into them. So, what does that mean? If there's more of them, we're bumping in harder. And what does that mean? We will heat up. That's the nature of them. The harder they hit something, the more they glow, the more they glow, the more they heat. All right. So let's see how we are moving through this space. Because not only are we being pulled this way, we're spinning in a circle. So that means that the North Poles and so forth will be exposed on a certain angle at certain times of the year on the forward stroke. Let's look at that. Okay, this is us being ripped through the arm of the galaxy. Now, what are we also doing? We're spinning around behind the sun, picking up the radiation of the sun, solar winds that are being pushed off of the leading edge of the sun away because it's scrubbing through the ether. And as these little balls, which are us and the other planets, spin, they also rub through the ether and they change their planes as they as they go around and orbit the sun so 
one is part of the year the northern pole hemisphere is facing the ether the other part of the year the southern hemisphere is facing the ether that gives us a difference in atmosphere intensities not only that twice a day the earth comes up with two different variations of the atmosphere i think it's at 10 o'clock and four o'clock in the morning 10 o'clock at night four o'clock in the morning and 10 o'clock in the morning and four o'clock in the afternoon something like that it's the Earth's face is hitting that, and it, you get a pulse of strength at the exact time every day. Every day, you get highs at two times and lows at two times. It's what's facing forward and what's coming from behind. And they've known about this since 1600s. Nobody can figure it out. Second thing they've known about that they can't figure out is that the surface of the sun is only 6,000 degrees, but the extreme corona outside of it is millions of degrees, and that's because the corona outside of it is scrubbing through the ether, heating up. It's the only reason it's possible. It's not going to heat up going from the surface out to where it's cold. It's going out to where it's scrubbing. In addition to that, um, Venus spins backwards and has no magnetic field because the particles we're going into are negative particles and everything on its surface is negative. Think about it. Just give it a thought. To give a minute and think. Every single thing there is has electrons surrounding it. That means it's negative on the surface. That means as it passes through negative particles, which are the electrons thrown from luminous bodies, that's my statement, that's what's out there, not nothing, like Einstein said. They are negative particles. They are spacing through space until they crash into something that has a nucleus and has core uh, electrons where it can bounce off and create light and heat. Otherwise, they go through space and don't do anything. They look like there's nothing there. That is the dark matter, dark energy. It's not it's nothing from 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 these stars and from these the sun. The sun is coming at us. It's sending stuff, and we just don't we just disregard it. It's real. And this is what creates the magnetic field around the Earth too. Our entire magnetic ball here is passing through magnetic particles creating an interference of magnetism around it just like it does in a in a a, a motor it's like just like exactly like the windings in a motor all right so what we have is a pressure from the galactic medium whatever it is it's sometimes going to be thin sometimes going to be thick sometimes going to be particles in there sometimes there's nothing in there I don't know where we're headed now. It seems like we're headed into a dense region. And maybe the Incas or the uh, Mayans or whoever had these calendars knew about this. Somebody knew about it. They were following the earth pretty, I mean, the, the heavens pretty, pretty close. All right, so that's my statement. And I say that we are not necessarily being heated up completely. I don't like the idea of, of carbon dioxide and burning and ruining the earth and digging all these holes and fracking. No, absolutely, I don't like that whatsoever. But I'm not 100% certain that that is the entire, well, I know it's not the entire reason for why it's, things are heating up, not at all. Um, however, it is ruining the earth, and we should get into fusion. And I have a, a way of talking about that, too, because we have accelerated light into plasma. And there's no reason that that shouldn't be able to be done with protons. I know I've showed this many times, but this is a red laser light. Normally it doesn't bow like this. It's being sucked through this venturi, which is accelerating it and creating plasma. Now, if this particle beam was not electrons, it was protons, there's no big difference. No difference whatsoever. They're just bigger, and they, they would crash into the venturi the same way, and they are also magnetic particles. They are going to react with each other to try to keep away from each other because they're positive particles and they are going to react just the way this is because these are negative particles trying to keep away from each other when they get to the other side of the venturi they say get away from me they all splay out all over the place and the reason that they're in these lines is because they are magnetic and this whole line of them pushes that whole line away and that pushes that line and pushes that line away like that it's all fully understood and this is possibly that's all you need to create fusion is plasma that's my understanding. Once you have the plasma, when it reconfigurates, it will reduce itself and become helium instead of the heavy hydrogens. Two and three make four in this case. <laughs> you know, it, anyway, anybody who understands fusion understands what would happen here. And you just have to do this in a vacuum and then suck off the extra energy. As, as far as I'm concerned, I, I don't see a reason not to do this. But no interest in that either. So... That's the way life is.